it ain't Shade 45. We are back. It is the All Out Show. Lord Sears in New York. Gru Jude is in L.A. with special guest Slane. What up? What's up, fellas? What's good? It's good to be back on the show. Man, it's been a minute, dog. Yeah, man. I think the last time I was on the show, I was actually coming from Static Selector's house. We were recording all night the night before, and somebody threw broke into my my uh, my navigator, smashed the window, and all that shit. So when I when I came on the show, I had to park the car outside over there with the smashed window and all that shit. That's what they get. What they get out the car? I forget, man. I forget. I was. I was uh, drinking heavily at the time. Every time they break into my car, well, not every time. One time they got me for everything, but, like, all the other times, they'll break the window and take the dumbest shit and leave awesome things. It's like, you fucking idiots. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what they did. I think they got me for some sneakers or something like that. They got oh, me for a bunch on. of sneakers. Last time they got me, they uh they stole a backgammon board and left a bottle of 100 Vicodin. <laughs> <laughs> like, you fucking what? dumbasses! Yeah, just uh, there was just a hundred bikes in there, and they fucking. And got you didn't give it. a fuck about the backgammon board. You were fucking rifling through the car looking oh. for the bike and making sure that that they were still there. You got up like yes. No, I was out of town when it happened, so I called my homie. I'm like, hey man, like I usually like you know she was a square too. I'm like I'm usually not into asking for favors like this, but. I got a hundred yellows sitting over in this car over there. Could you please just grab it for me and keep it? She was she's cool, man. She did it for me, which is pretty cool for a total square because they look at drugs like like it's the demon. Yeah, man. Are you off of drugs or what? I'm off of drugs. Good for you. I've been uh, I've been sober almost six months now. Why did you decide to kick? It was just time, man. You know, like anybody who knows me, I see her knows. You see me wild out plenty of times, uh, man. It's just, it was just years, you know what I'm saying? And when you get to be, I'm 36 now, so when you get to be a certain age and you're wilding out like you were when you were 18, it's just not good. I mean, it, I was in the hospital a lot. And, you know, I was my body was just shutting down because I would just work nonstop. I'd be in the studio for days on end. I'd be drinking two-fifths a day of, uh, of vodka, or sometimes Jameson. And I was still doing cocaine 22 years into it. You know what I mean? Like, it was, it's just my body was giving up on me, and, and and it was just time to turn the page. It was time to leave that life behind, you know? Like I already beat so many odds in my life and got to a good spot in my career. It was like, what the fuck am I doing still, you know? It's, uh, and, yo, d did you, at, I'm guessing at two-fifths a day, you said how many, two-fifths a day? Yeah, man. I mean, I was yeah. throwing up pretty much three or four times a week for the past 10 years. You but know, that it, shit right there, you can't just, you can't even call turkey. You might fuck around and die, huh? Yeah, well, you know, I it, I get the shakes and stuff like that when I stopped. Like, but I, got, I was used to all that. So I was used to the physical pain, and I had been to detox a bunch of times over the past 10 years. Yeah. And I, this time I did it without it, and I was just ready. You know, like before I would always try to quit, and then I'd relapse like in a month. You know what I mean? This time I was just ready. So I, I fought through the physical pain kind of fedolo in the beginning and you know it didn't take long before i felt good again but uh yeah that was it was rough man you, you know like i had just gotten so used to throwing up like i would just throw up casually like i'd be walking down the street next year i'd be like <laughs> just lean over throw up be like excuse me <laughs> it was like burping and shit <laughs> Yeah, some motherfuckers fart. You just throw up. <laughs> Y'all, like, I went into the hospital. I, I had to get check into the hospital in Hollywood, and, um, you know, they kept me overnight. They did ultrasounds on my heart. The doctor's like, look, if you keep living like this, you're going to die within the year. Then they did the ultrasound on my heart, and, and I go, what does it look like to the, to the other lady? And she goes, it looks great. You got a strong, healthy heart. In my head, like, I was such an addict and alcoholic, I was like, so I'm cool then. <laughs> the doctor just told me I'm going to die this year, and, and and she tells me that my heart looks strong and healthy. I was I made my own diagnosis. I'm like, I'm good to go. I was back on the street drinking, like, the next day. So, you know, it, w I just had to get a hold of it, man. That was it, so... It's been, it's been a, it's been, this has been a constant struggle for you your whole life, huh? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think I was born, I think people are born with, with it. You know, like when I, when I drink something or do a drug, like everything just feels, the world feels like it's an okay place to be. You know what I mean? Right. And I think that's something that you're kind of born with. So, I mean, I've been struggling with it my whole life, <clears throat> not necessarily even struggling where I was trying to get sober, but I was just, you know, living life in a fucked up way.
Right. But it's it, it is. It's funny. I'm I'm you and I are the same age and it's like that shit ain't that cute no more. You know what I mean? Like the stuff that you did at twenty six and how <laughs> yeah, hard man. you go and like even like, you know, just running through fucking twenty twenty year old bitches and going nuts, like that shit that shit is not adorable on somebody pushing 40, dog. Yeah, you start to be the old guy in the club and shit. <laughs> you know, and you're coming out of the bathroom wiping your nose off. That ain't cool. Yeah, it's like you, got, you old enough to be people's dads up in this motherfucker. People looking at you like, why are you still here, bro? Yeah, yeah man. Hey, you looking for your son? <laughs> yeah, man. I I've, uh, I had something similar a couple months ago, so it's cra- What are you doing to fill your time? What are you doing to fill... I like- mean, I'm busy as fuck. I don't know how I was doing it before. I mean... I actually do less work now because I sleep eight hours a night now. You know, like I was not sleeping four or five times a week. Like literally, I just keep. How much coke would you go through? Not, a, not. I did a lot more when I was younger. Like as it got older, as I got older, I, I, I kind of hated coke, but I just did it so I could keep drinking through the night, and it kept me awake. So you know, I would only do like a gram of coke a day. That's still a nice amount, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, it's not <laughs> <laughs> only a gram a day. But you know, like, yeah. see, I'm, that's your my, fucking nose is hollering, bro. It's <laughs> like, come on, stop, no mas. You know, but I know people do eight ball, quarter ounce, and shit like that. I wasn't getting down like that. Yeah, it's all different levels of shit. You know what I mean? It's all different levels of faded. I was functioning, man. I was a functioning drunk, but. Uh, you know, my body was not functioning anymore. And, and yo, you been in like, what? You were in the Ben Affleck movie with the bank robbery. What's the name of that, that shit? The Town. The I was town? actually so, I actually stayed sober to shoot that movie. That, how quickly did you go back on drugs? Immediately. After that? Immediately. <laughs> after. So how long were you sober for? for I was for 77 days, which was the longest I was this ever is, sober that is that, that Right. Did you guys hear that? That is, <laughs> that is a fucking attic right there. How long? 77 <laughs> days, three hours, 22 minutes. I jumped right in. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I mean, the thing about it, too, when we did the town, I, I don't know if you remember, but there were scenes in it like after the first robbery where it had like this montage of us kind of partying after we did the first robbery. And, you know, I'm sniffing a line and smoking a joint and I'm drinking beers in it. But that was all like, you know, I had I had um, my boy on set with me to kind of, you know, keep my mind right and shit. But then I'm doing that shit in the scenes, like sniffing fake coke, smoking fake weed and all that. By the time I got off the set, I was like, oh, I was like, let's go out to the bar, man. Come on. just We'll be good. I'll be good. I'll be able to get back to work in the morning. But, you know. What the fuck do they give you to snort? That's what. What is what is the fake coke that everybody snort? is always mad interested in that man? It's yeah. it's lactate powder and it doesn't taste like anything. I was what? fascinated because when I shot Gone Baby Gone, yeah, it's milk powder. When I shot Gone Baby Baby Gone, I played the coke dealer and um, Mark Margolis was in that scene. He was in uh, what's he's in everything. He's he's in uh, Breaking Bad. He's in Scarface. He's uh, he was in. Uh, What's that jail show on MTV, uh, uh, on HBO? Oz. Oz. He was in Oz. He played the dude. He played the assassin in, uh, or what, did, he, did he play the, no, he didn't play the assassin in Scarface. He played. Uh, well, he did. He's he's sitting in the front seat and Scarface kills him. No yeah. kids. I told you no fucking kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He shoots him in his head. Oh, yeah. so, shit. So they're sniffing in the scene, but I was selling the coke. So on the first, <laughs> on the first movie, I was on this sniffing, and I was curious as fuck to see what it was. So I was like, hey, let me take a whack of that. Even though it wasn't really cool, that that could have been a sign to everybody. <laughs> oh, oh, trust me, that shit. Red lights went off and everybody <laughs> said, "They're like, yeah, sure, Slane, go ahead, have a have a whack." Hey, buddy. what is that? What is that? Anyways, let me try that. <laughs> I wonder what that smells like. <laughs> what, what is that like, guys? <laughs> hey, well, it's good to see. Look, man, look, it's kind of crazy when you're able to keep your shit together and. Uh, just go nuts with drugs and alcohol because it allows you to keep that lifestyle up. You don't hit rock bottom. And it's awesome that you didn't fucking, like, lose everything for for you to quit doing shit. The doctors had to yeah. tell you you were going to die. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, you know, I've definitely heard worse, worse uh, scenarios where people hit, but... You know, I I still could have been a. I feel like I could have been a lot further, but it's not something I I gotta. Uh, I should do. To me, I can't dwell on that shit. Like to, I I just gotta do what's right for me right now. So, you know, that was a big chapter in my life. Maybe even like a couple of acts in my book, but but uh, you know, right now I'm, I'm uh, moving forward on to bigger, better things. 
Speaking of which, let's play one of the, well, let's play a song off of your off of your new CD, The King of Everything Else. You know what's funny is that everybody with this record, everyone's like, "Yo, you're better sober." I recorded this record when I was fucked up at the height of my fucked upness. <laughs> like I finished it six months ago, and now I'm putting it out. Now that I got my shit back together, you know, but I. Uh, I was fucking bombed the whole time I made this record. It's funny that people are like, you sound better sober. Like, like, like thanks, bro. I appreciate this ain't it. it, man. Hey, cool. <laughs> I was just asking you about La Coca Nostra. You guys got, you guys are gonna, you set to drop an album. As yeah, well. we're, we're uh, working on some new shit right now, actually. It'll probably come out in the fall. We're doing a big show uh, with uh, Cypress Hill, Immortal Technique, and Vinnie Paz at the Best Buy Theater in New York on October 30th, the night before Halloween. Yes, That's and we're dope. actually we're actually flying out to Australia next week too to do a tour there. We got Europe in November. We'll have some U.S. states coming up too. So. That's something that I was just saying to you off air. You know, like nowadays, you just gotta keep, you know, the content coming, keep consistent with giving giving people shit. Cause you know, you put out a record and like two weeks later, people be like, "When are you dropping some new shit?" You know, I just dropped a new album two weeks ago. Yeah, but a new one. Where's a new one? You know what I mean? Cause it's like. They don't sit with shit no more, man. They just like yeah, eat, man. eat, eat, throw it out. Eat, 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 throw it out. That book I gave you that I wrote, it was like, it's like a lot of drug stories and shit. And they're like, when's the next one? I'm like, motherfucker, that one almost killed me. So, like, <laughs> fucking read that twice because I don't know what else to tell you, man. Well, that, I mean, this is the, you know, you gave me the book right before. This looks dope because it is the kind of thing, like, they're short stories. I've, I've, I've always been a fan of short stories. You can read that, especially for what I do, like, when I'm traveling and shit like that. I could bang out two, three stories, throw it in the bag, yeah. keep it moving with the book. It's like, you know. Do you see yourself writing this? Do you see yourself writing something? Like, you've, you've lived such a wild and crazy life. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, I'm a writer. That's more than I'm a rapper, you know what I'm saying? Hip-hop has grown. You, I always use the the format of hip-hop to write, but, you know, I see myself definitely write movies and, and, and whatever. I'm a storyteller. That's what I like to do. What's the movie that you're working on right now? Or You said you said you got one coming out. Well, we shot it We shot it a while back. Like, you know, when you make a movie, it's a year and a half before it comes out. So I shot this movie with Javi Keitel. It's my first lead role. I got a lead in it. It's with Javi Keitel and Ben Bonds. It's called By the Gun. It comes out December 5th. That's dope, dude. Yeah, man. What's Harvey Keitel like? He's an intense dude, man. He's he's one of my favorite actors ever. You know, The Wolf, everybody knows him as, and, and Pulp Fiction, and Mr. White, and Reservoir Dogs, mm -hmm. you know, Mean Streets. He was, he's just a legendary, legendary actor. To work with him was it was surreal. You know, it was great. Did you learn? What'd you learn from him? Well, I didn't, you know, tell you the truth, man, he was such an intense guy. Like, he's in character. You know, Brad Pitt, I asked questions to. Ben Affleck, I asked questions to. Javier, I just kind of watched him. <laughs> what, what, did, what did Brad Pitt tell you? Uh, what was the thing he told me that was best? He said, uh, you know, I had talked to him. I, at that stage of the game, I had only done eight auditions in my in my career, and I got six of them. And he was like, damn, man, that's a crazy percentage. He's like, you're going to go through some point in your career where you're doing auditions and nothing is, is landing for you, and you just got to stick at it because you do what you do really well. you know." And he was right because now I ain't getting shit. <laughs> you just got to keep going though, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, when you realize that every, they're looking for something different and everything, and it, it's all such chance as to what, you know, it could be the height of the dude that they cast in this other role, and yep. you're too tall. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like That's that Godfather shit, man. They, uh, Sonny Corleone, they had a different dude be Sonny, but but Pacino was so damn short, they had to get they had to bring in uh, James Caan. Yeah, and it's, I mean, that's there, how it there works. There you go. Like, ah. James Pitt, Conn is James Conn. The other dude ain't shit, you know? Like, and that's how it goes sometimes. Brad Pitt dropped a jewel on me, though, man, because, I, you know, I had told him what I had done with my career and all that, and, and he said, you know, sounds like you got a, a good uh, plan. He said, plan your work and work your plan. And I, that stuck in my head that he said that. Brad Pitt seemed cool as hell, man. Yo, he's cool as a motherfucker. He's just so fucking famous that he can't really... You know, I, I got to watch kind of how he has to operate. He can't live a regular life. Like, you know, two two black caravans pull up, and you don't know which one he's in. He pops out. But, like, he has to really be kind of stealth because when you sit in a room with this guy, nobody is looking at you. Everybody's looking at fucking Brad Pitt. Everybody in the wow. fucking room. You ever want to... You ever want to feel completely invisible? <laughs> Hang out with Brad Pitt? Yo, man, it's crazy. Like, you know, people are popping up out of the bushes to try to take pictures and all that. Like, <laughs> I mean, you know, he's at kind of the top of the food chain when it comes to that shit. Like, 
He's he's in the scope with the paparazzi more than anybody, I think. I'm going to tell you my favorite role of his was when he played the pothead on the couch in True Romance. That's a great role. That guy, he was fucking killed that shit, dude. He probably had like seven lines all together, but man, that motherfucker Brad Pitt is the shit in that movie. I liked him in 12 Monkeys, too, man. That's yeah, that was dope. Movies. Hell yeah. Yeah, that was a good-ass one. But yo, for for you know, especially for that level of fame that he has, what a what a good down to earth dude, man. Do you find that is that is that basically once you get in there with these actors that is pretty like I'm sure I look what why when everybody was shitting on Ben Affleck, I was never shitting on him because I always felt like they were just mad that he was fucking J Lo. Like Castle's was mad that he was beating up that J Lo pussy and they couldn't wrap their head around it. They're like, oh, he's he's not a good actor. Like, fuck yeah, you. It's kind of beyond me why he was so hated because, re- you know, to know him, like, he's one of the most likable guys you could ever meet. I think people don't like his face, dog. <laughs> like, honestly, I think people just look at his face and, like, look at this white motherfucker fucking J Lo and just get their all their hearts hurt. You think it's still like that? Like, I think, you know, he, he had that point in his career where he was, like, public enemy number one and then he made this comeback with, you know, Gone Baby Gone and the town and then. I go one best picture now. He's Batman. You think there's still that hate for him? No, nah, people fuck with him now. But I, I'm just you, saying. people love the comeback story, man. And he's he's kind of got that. But I think in general with those type of guys that to to get to that level, I think you have to be like really likable and social. You know what I mean? And and that's those guys are definitely you know very charismatic people. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. No. I think people were able to start liking him once Mark Anthony started banging J Lo. Like that's <laughs> when they were able to be like, I guess he's okay. What? How do you think he's gonna be as Batman? I think he's gonna be dope. I don't think that. I honestly don't think that once you play uh-huh. one, like he already had Daredevil. Like you're not allowed to have more than one superhero. It's gonna confuse me. But like, I think it'll be fine too. Yeah. I think he's got the chin for it, man. I saw some of the pictures. They look pretty ill. You know, it it all depends on how good the movie is, honestly, because, you know, Christian Bale was great as Batman. He but, was my least favorite part but, of Batman, dude. Well, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. To me, you know, he was gr- he's he's one of the best actors on the faces, face of the earth. But, you know, that movie was great no matter who. Was, you know, the way they did, the, Christopher Nolan did those that Batman trilogy, that was like the godfather of superhero movies to me. No, it, it went super hard. And, and, like, you found people being picky about that shit. Like, I don't know, I ain't like two that much, but, like, or I ain't like three. Like, yo, motherfucker, that still kills goddamn near everything that Marvel has dropped. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like, think about that. Uh, what do you, what what do you want to do more next? Are you are you more wanting to go towards acting or rapping? Because that acting money's got to be better, huh? Yeah, man. I mean, look, from a business standpoint, it's very easily to do the acting stuff because people aren't buying music anymore, man. Like my record is in the top ten in hip hop, and you know those kind of. Th- so it's across the board for everybody, but it's not the numbers aren't the kind of numbers that you know it's such a small percentage of your fan base actually goes out and buy your record now by the way anybody who goes out and buy the record i appreciate the support but uh you know the the acting stuff has a a longer end game music is just kind of what i've been passionate about my whole life and i love to do it it's hard for me to see myself not doing it that's what's up let's play another one of your songs slain i want to thank you for coming by and just chopping it up with us is there anything i forgot to ask you or that you would like to discuss Oh, you didn't ask me if I want a cigarette or anything like that. <laughs> Are you still smoking cigarettes? Yeah, I smoke cigarettes like a chimney now, man. Oh, the yeah. coffee oh, in the cell. I have like seven cups of coffee, a pack and a half of cigarettes a day, and I wasn't even smoking before. Why don't you get on that vaporizer shit? It, it, it looks faggy you know, as hell. Yeah, because like, Danny, Danny Boy fucked it up for me. I was smoking the vape. I was off the cigarettes for like three weeks, and he started making fun of me because he's like, yeah, that looks like a dildo. Blah, 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 blah. And, that, <laughs> shit. and I, couldn't, I couldn't put it to my mouth anymore. Yeah. It's not a dildo. Though, though, man. I like, know it's not, but you know, like really, I lost the charger and I started smoking cigarettes again. And I was like, fuck that thing. Cigarettes do look way cooler. Like, you look way cool. cooler oh, as a smoker. Yeah. But that shit fucks up your dick game, though, man. Cigarettes fuck up your penis game. My dick is all right, man. I'm sure you're great, but it would be better. <laughs> 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 Yo, I got a show at the whiskey. Your girl is like, no, nah, he's he's killing me. <laughs> Tell him to say, give him another cigarette. I'm sore. Oh my I got a show at the a whiskey go go in L. A. Saturday night too. That is slain, man. Hey, what's your uh, what's your Twitter and all that? Slain's World. Slain is spelled S L A I N E. By the way, Slain's World is my handles on that. All right, it's Slain. Be right. it was, yeah, let's let's do this shit, man. It was a pleasure chatting with you as always. Yeah, thanks man. for having me again, guys. All right, Slain, be good. Eight 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 four five.